back to How to Cake It. I'm Yolanda, and this week I'm hatching up a really special cake. Oh! A Hatchimal. To make my Hatchimal cake, I baked four pounds of my ultimate chocolate cake and two pounds of my ultimate vanilla cake. The egg is gonna be chocolate, and the Hatchimal's head is going to be vanilla. For the head of the Hatchimal, I baked my vanilla cake in a spear pan. I like to level these kind of cakes while they're in their pan using the top edge as a guide. For the egg, I baked two halves of my egg-shaped pan as well as a six-inch round chocolate cake. Because the Hatchimal's egg is sort of flat at the bottom, I'm going to trim my egg cakes. I'm trimming off about an inch because they have a nice flat base. Now that I hold both halves of my egg cake together, I realize that this egg is not as plump as a Hatchimal egg. So I decide to use all of my cake humps to bump up my cake a little. Yep, I bumped with my humps. <laughs> I actually get really excited when I can use the cake humps. It's very exciting for me. You do. Orhan gets upset when I use the cake humps. <laughs> I feel happy. So what I basically did was level them as best I could, and I ended up cutting three pieces, sort of like if this is an egg. Should I draw it? <laughs> Let me draw for you. Egg hump, egg hump, and then this was the round pan hump. Right? So I made one layer of cake out of all my humps together, just making sure that they were the same height. Yes, I, I'm an amazing drawer. <laughs> Should we auction this off? Yeah, I'm gonna sign this one. Now I need some squeeze to help me simple syrup all of my cakes, the two egg halves and the humpy layer in between. It's really helpful to simple syrup cakes so that all of the moisture stays locked in in the long decorating process. And you can get your own sir squeeze along with my cake book together at howtocakeit.com. My chocolate cake recipe's in here. It's always doing the cake recipe. Also in here. So is the simple syrup recipe. <laughs> also in here. So I'm going to use melted compound chocolate, both milk and dark, to glue my egg together. I spread some melted dark compound chocolate with a small offset spatula, and then quickly I place the hump layer on top. It is chocolate, so it will set up, so you need to work quickly. And then you can move on and spread the melted milk compound chocolate onto that layer and add the second half of the egg. Once all of the chocolate is completely set, I'm going to now pick up that egg cake and rest it on top of my six inch round cake. I just need to bump up the egg a little. I'm doing a lot of bumping up today. Yeah, it's a very bumpy right? episode. Yeah, it is. It's a bumpy ride. Now I want to carve away that six inch cake to add to the shape of the egg. I'm making an egg extension <laughs> is what I'm doing. The next thing I need to do is glue a small round board to the bottom of my egg extension. Now that the chocolate is set, I'm going to flip it right side up and then I'm going to spread some more melted chocolate onto that extension and carefully place my whole egg. It's time to cut off the top of my egg because as you can see, this little Hatchimal hatches out of the egg. See? And this will be the top part of the egg that sits on top of the top. This Hatchimal has, can I talk for a minute? Guess what? I don't like my egg extension in the end. I don't know, I'm looking at these two pieces. I feel like the bottom piece of the egg looks kind of weird. So I'm gonna flip the bottom part of the egg cake over and trim it until I'm happy. And once I'm done, I'll just glue a new board back on the bottom and flip it right side up. See, this is what happens when your model doesn't arrive on time. I actually baked this cake uh, and I was waiting for the Hatchimal to arrive and it didn't get here in time, so I just kind of had to guess what I would need. And as it turns out, the extension didn't work as well as I thought it would. That's all right. Now it's time to crumb coat and chill these two parts of my egg. Get them in the fridge so I can work on my vanilla Hatchimal head. Hatchimal head. Mmm. <laughs> First thing I want to do is carve off all of the caramelization and thus making thus. Do you see that? <laughs> yeah, Yolanda is sophisticated. 
thus making my sphere a bit smaller. Now I'm going to place that first half of the sphere on top of my uncarved sphere and continue to carve all the way around. When I'm happy with the shape of my sphere, I once again use Sir Squeeze to simple syrup both sides of each half of my vanilla cake. Once it's fully absorbed, I spread some white compound chocolate on top of one half of my sphere and place the other half on top. Let it set. Now I can crumb coat and chill this vanilla sphere and get it in the fridge as well. Don't forget guys, you can get my deluxe crumb coat and chill bundle at howtocakeit.com. Just click the I and head to my shop. All three parts of my cake are now crumb coated, chilled, and it's time to ice them all again in a layer of Italian meringue buttercream. Okay, now I can start decorating. The first thing I need to do is cover the flat top of the bottom half of my egg with a little bit of purple fondant. I had dyed my fondant to match the purple of my Hatchimal and I just wanna put a layer of it on top of the egg so that when the Hatchimal's head is on, if we see any space between, we just see purple and we think that that's the Hatchimal's body inside the egg. The next thing I need to do is cover both halves of the egg in white fondant, just like an eggshell. And before I cover this bottom half, I actually wanna flip it onto a cake pan so that I can cover the bottom half of the egg like this and place it. <laughs> I normally don't like eggshells in my kitchen. I roll out some white fondant so that it is larger than the size of my egg, drape it over and smooth it quickly with my hands all around the cake and then I trim away the excess at the bottom but I don't do it right to where the cake is, I leave some hanging. That's why I use the cake pan because I want to create that jagged edge that is created when the little hatchmill busted out of the eggshell. I just used the tip of my knife and I just cut in in all different directions, cutting and sort of pulling away the excess fondant. You're saying that you did not measure the cracks on the egg of your model. I did not. Did, uh, that's disappointing, Yolanda. I'm sorry, I'm getting <laughs> just plain lazy. <laughs> now I need to cover the top half of my egg, and although I don't need to flip it, I do also want to place it on top of a cake pan so that I have that room to create that jagged edge. I covered this in the same way I covered the bottom of my egg, except it was a bit easier because, well, it's a smaller cake. Again, I recreate that jagged edge with the tip of my knife, just cutting in every direction. Hey guys, it's the perfect time to join my sprinkle service because this month you get not one, but two sprinkles. These medleys are perfect for all of your spring baking and you'll also get an inspo guide with an exclusive recipe and beautiful pictures to help you. Plus, this week it's on sale at howtocake.com so don't miss out. Now I wanna create little pieces of shell because when this Hatchimal was busting through the shell, pieces were flying everywhere. So I used my knife and that excess white fondant that was already rolled out to cut out random jagged pieces and lay them on a board to dry. Time to move on to the Hatchimal head, which is my vanilla sphere. The first thing I wanna do is cover it in a layer of the purple fondant that I made. So I rolled out my purple fondant as thin as I could, draped it over the sphere, used my hands to smooth it and tuck the fondant underneath, and then I just cut away the excess. I've discussed my sphere fear with some of my other cakes on the channel, but no need to fear. It doesn't matter if you have a lot of creases in this sphere, it will be covered by the fuzzy hair. To make all of the Hatchimal's fuzzy hair, I am going to use my trusted clay extruder. What you want to do is knead in some vegetable shortening to make your fondant more pliable, and this will help it come out of the clay extruder smoother. But to save time and make this process a lot faster, I'm going to bust out a drill. I actually, you know what, when I did the toque cake and the emoji cake, Jeremy did this for me off camera with the drill. Today I'm gonna to show you how it's done. I love my clay extruder because it comes with a lot of different face plates. So there's actually a few that I could use for like fur or hair of different thicknesses. I'm gonna use the thinnest one with the most holes. And you can get your own clay extruder at howtocakeit.com. In fact, it's on sale right now. 
Once I've extruded a whole bunch of my purple strands, I'm going to use a sharp knife to cut short lengths of those strands. And then I'm gonna glue these short lengths onto my sphere cake by first brushing on some clear piping gel and just like pinching together little bundles and placing them on. Now when you pinch together, you're gonna to get some excess fondant at the bottom of your bundle. If there's too much, it will be too heavy and fall off the sphere. So you wanna trim uh, the bottom of your bundle so it's nice and flat and place it on the cake. I cover some of the top of my Hatchimal head and then I realize I wanna make its little kind of mohawk. It has like a mohawk at the, at the back. I'm going to roll out some blue fondant and cut out that like mohawky shape. Oh, it's mohawk like a dinosaur. Yeah, but what is that? Guys, if you know what this like mohawky thing is called, let me know below. Let's hear it. Mm -hmm. Then I just used a little piping gel and glued that mohawk on. It's so cute, it really, really is. So while I'm working with this blue fondant, I'm also gonna take the time to make his little beak. That is quite a beak. That beak busted through the shell. So I created the beak in two parts, sort of the top of the beak and the bottom of the beak. I used a sculpting tool to create the little nostrils, and then I just put it aside to dry until I'm ready to put it on. What do you guys think a Hatchimal is? I think it's a bird. What do you think? Dinosaur. Dinosaurs don't have beaks. Yeah, but birds don't have dinosaur mohawks. But weren't there dinosaurs that could fly? Now, I did want my beak to have a little bit more support, so I just used a couple of toothpicks to help support it. It's a heavy beak. To make the Hatchimal's eyes, which change color, by the way, constantly, I am taking some yellow fondant, rolling it into a ball, and I'm just placing it into some bowls that I have because I kind of want a rounded shape for the top of the eye. Okay. Then I chilled that fondant for a little bit, removed it from the bowl, and used a circle cutter to cut out two equal eyes. In the end, I realized they were a little thicker than I wanted. I don't want his eyes to quite like bulge out. <laughs> so I used a fondant rolling pin to thin them out a little, recut the circles that I wanted. I rolled out some black fondant nice and thin, cut out two circles for the pupil, and then I rolled out a little bit of white fondant really thin and cut out two smaller circles for the catch light. I get excited when I have to make a catch light. I don't know why. I think you just like saying catch, catch light. Catch light. And, and you know what? There's a ton of episodes where I don't say that because I didn't know what it was called. Yeah. What? In what episode did I first learn to say catch light? I don't remember. Guys, let me know. I place my eyes on and build up the hair around. Every day I'm extruding. I keep extruding and cutting strands of hair until my entire Hatchimal head is nice and fuzzy with two eyes and a beak and a mohawk. If you know someone who recently hatched a Hatchimal, share this video with them. Because the Hatchimal's eyes glow quite a bit, I wanted to paint them and make them a bit brighter. So I used some yellow food coloring and some clear food grade alcohol, made a little bit of paint, and I painted the eyes. Now you want to be careful not to smear the black color onto the yellow. So paint around the yellow eyeballs first and then go in and paint the people. Don't forget to add your catch lights. <laughs> your catch lights. The next thing I need to paint is the inside of the eggshell. The outside of the shell is white, but the inside is like this slight gray. Who's seeing the inside of the eggshell? Me. <laughs> so I mix some white food coloring with like a touch of black to get a really light gray and some clear food grade alcohol. And then I use a small brush to just paint the parts of the shell that were the jagged parts, the inside of the jagged parts. We have so much fun coming up with the puns that you see on my Cake Tea Club teas, but now we need your help selecting this month's tea. We have three options and we really can't decide amongst ourselves, so we wanna know which tea you think should be the winner. Place your vote for number one, two, or three by commenting below with the hashtag Cake Tea Club. The winning tea will be available to Cake Tea Club members as of April 15th, so if you want one, make sure you join before then. Click here. To join. It's time to move on to some really fun painting. I have to splatter the outside of this egg with food coloring just like a Hatchimal. Well, I don't think a Hatchimal's food coloring, but you understand what I mean. 
I'm just using a brush, dipping it into my paint and just, well, splattering. It's so like nerve wracking because you can't really control splatter. I see what I mean. And you know what else happened, Orhan? I mixed blue and I mixed purple. But when the paint was dry, they looked like the same color. Uh, I see. It but looked like the same color. I and see. I was like, I'm gonna let it dry and maybe I'll go back and try to remix blue and add it. But then I was concerned that the egg would be over splattered. I see. No, but that's fine. It still looks great. Yeah, see, this is why I like having water. <laughs> I like it. Let's put this hatch roll together and see it come to life. But there's going to be a lot more awesome cakes on this channel in the coming weeks. So if you haven't subscribed, please subscribe now. To begin assembly, first I flip the bottom half of the egg right side up. Now I need to insert some dowels down into that egg to support the head and the top part of the egg. And then I spread on just a little bit of royal icing as glue. And now I have to carefully pick up this fuzzy Hatchimal head and place it on top. After all that hard work, I have to give my Hatchimal a haircut. So I just take my sharp knife and cut the top of the mohawk off. <laughs> I feel bad. Now I need to place a sharpened dowel through the center of this cake through its head and the egg. Then I spread on a little bit of royal icing around the dowel and placed the egg cake on top. It's a nail polish bottle cake. Okay, nail polish bottle cake tutorial. Click here to watch a tutorial of my nail polish cake bottle. <laughs> Click here to watch my nail polish cake bottle tutorial. <laughs> Click here to watch a tutorial of my nail polish bottle cake. Here to watch part two of my Easter cake compilations video. Over on how to cake it step by step. Ah, it only took 15 tries. <laughs>